Hey everyone, it's Kat for Wandering Suit Like Lesbian Travels. And today, we're gonna make fried bread. So about, ooh, I guess back in March and April, when we had the original Corona COVID-19 lockdown in Hanoi, we were looking for things to eat. Uh, and fried bread was one of those things that we found on the internet and love. Fried bread is a Native American traditional bread. It's very simple, easy to make. And so we're gonna show you how to do it today because we're gonna have fried bread for dinner. It is so we have a few things that go to fried bread and actually not that many, which is why it's a great beginner recipe. We have flour. Here I have four cups of flour or thereabouts. I have some baking powder and I have some salt. I also have some water, warm water. So we're gonna start with the flour. I don't have a bowl because we left our bowl in Hanoi. So I'm using a pot and provide So you're gonna sprinkle the flour in here. And you can cut this flour down. This is gonna make probably, depending on the size of the, the, the fry bread itself, it can make anywhere from eight to 12. No, I would say eight to 12, eight to 10 depending on again what size. So we got the flour in there. We're gonna put some salt, and that's about a quarter of a teaspoon of salt, give or take. And then we got baking soda. Yeah, baking soda. Think about it, it's baking powder or baking soda. And we're gonna put about one, one and a half tablespoons of that in there. Just make sure we're good to go. And I like to use the fingertip method because it works for me. Now what I do, once I put all that in there, some people would just mix it with their hands in that type of motion. I just use my, my uh, what's this thing called? I forgot. My whisk. Thank you. Thank you, Handy. Camera one, Amber. So we're gonna whisk it around, make sure it's all mixed in there. You want the salt and the baking soda, baking powder. How am I using baking powder, baking soda, one of those. I'll clarify. In there, I'm gonna mix it in real good. And that is that. Okay, so this is center stage now. Get my hair out the way. And then we're gonna pour a little water in the middle. And then we're gonna start mixing. Coming in from the outside in is the way I like to do it. And the water, it varies. Some people use about a cup, some of them use about two cups. It really just depends on how much flour you're gonna use and how much you know it th you think it's gonna take. I'm probably gonna need a little bit more water, but I'm just gonna add a little bit at a time until I get to where I need to be. You see it's coming together. And I'm always making sure that I'm getting the sides in there. And what the thing about fry bread is you can make savory dishes as well as sweet. Today we're gonna do a curry. And what I do is I make a, a curry with uh, protein and vegetables. And then I have some rice and label that, lay all that on top and mix it all together. See how it's coming together? I'm gonna add a little bit more water. Too dry and if it gets too wet then you can always add more flour if it gets too dry you can always add more water truly up to you just gotta get a feel for the dough and make sure that it's all intertwined here and working together you can also do this outside of the bowl I just prefer to do it inside something. It's just a little easier to clean up. And then it's also where I'm gonna leave it to rest. So you're gonna rest this um, for about a minimum of 15 minutes. I usually do a warm rest for about two hours or so. You can also put this in the fridge overnight. Uh, you can also 
put a pat of butter on top, just spread some butter on top uh, before you let it rest. It's just gonna give it a little extra. You can also put sugar in this uh, to give it a little extra as well. The sugar, I think, helps if you're planning on making sweet desserts with the uh, fried bread dough. If you're not gonna do that, then I will cut down on the sugar a little bit, but it does, it doesn't hurt. Maybe a teaspoon in there or so, you'd be fine. So our dough is ready. We're going to let it rest again for about two hours or so. Then we're gonna come back and show you how to fry it. Fry bread. Part two of fry bread. So our fry bread has been um, sitting and rising, not really rising, just coming together for about two to three hours or so. This is our dough. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this into little balls and we're gonna let it rise for another 15 minutes. So there's a process to the fry bread. That's not the only complicated part about it. So we're gonna break off a little piece. About so big, you can make it bigger. And then what I like to do is sometimes I put a little tap on my fingers of flour. I'm gonna make it so, bring it all together. I'm basically just making a good ball, a good sized ball. And this is also a way of kneading it again and bringing everything back together, opening up the dough, letting it breathe a little bit. I am not a baker. We're gonna put that right there. And that is one. The next one will make it a little bit bigger because Amber has some big. Put a little flour on my hands. And I have a little oil here too, just in case I want to add a little bit extra to it if I feel like it's a little dry. Now, when I <clears throat> put it up to rise or to rest for about two hours, I did cover it with a damp cloth uh, or a damp paper towel. Okay, and that is the bowl. And we're gonna put it right there. Notice the difference in sizes. And that's gonna determine this, the size of your fry bread when you actually fry them. Okay, I'm just basically turning the dough into the center with my thumbs and fingers, basically getting it to form a circle. And again, I just have the extra flour and oil here just in case I need it just a little bit more, either it's a little wet or it's a little dry. And then I put a little flour sometimes on the bottom, just to make sure it doesn't stick to my board, but this should be good to go. This is a big one right here. I may have to fight about it over this one. Okay, <clears throat> so we have one, two, well, eight, nine, ten. All right, so we're gonna cover these back up again, rest them for 15 minutes, then we're gonna come back, we're gonna roll them out, and then we're gonna fry them, and then we're gonna have fried bread. All right, y'all, we're almost at the end of fry bread day. Our bread has sat for about 15 minutes or so. Remember, I covered it with a damp cloth or paper towel. So I have my rolling pin, have a little flour, I'm gonna put a little flour on the table, a little flour on the rolling pin, and I'm gonna grab one of these. What I tend to do is first is just work it with my hands first. Now some people can do the whole thing without rolling it out, and more power to them, I'm not there yet. So I just start my circle, getting everything formed, working the dough out a little bit with my hands, circular motion, and then I finish it off on the table with my rolling pin. Shape does not matter. You can go for round, but don't, don't be upset if it's oblong or hell, rectangular or some new shape that you have mastered. It does not matter. What matters a little bit 
is how thick it is. How thick it is is going to determine uh, the length of frying time and how thick the bread is going to be when you're eating it, however you're going to eat it. Remember I said you can do Mexican, you can do Italian, you can do like some uh, pizza sauce or some tomato sauce, some cheese, uh, ground beef, you throw it in the oven and bake it after you fry it. So this is a pretty decent size one. We got thin. And then we're gonna roll out the rest. I just leave them over here for a little bit, let them rinse while I do the next one. And again, just working it, making it into a circular action. Put it on the table, get a little flour down. And again, the marvelous thing about fry bread is you can't really make mistakes. There is, if it's not circular, nobody's going to be mad at you. They're just going to be like, where's my next piece of fry bread? You can do Mexican, as I mentioned. You can do some ground beef taco seasoning mix with some cheese, some salsa, uh, some cilantro, sour cream. Perfect. I'm just going to layer them here and then we're going to fry them. So I'm going to go ahead on and finish rolling these out and then we're going to fry. All right, y'all, we are ready to fry our fry bread. Over here is the fry bread that we've rolled out. There's about five circular patterns here of dough. We have some oil in the same pot that we use as a bowl. We've washed it out. Put some oil in here. You're not gonna put too much oil, just enough to cover the bottom, give you about an inch or so. That's all you need, about an inch, maybe an inch and a half of oil. You want it on a medium high heat. You don't want it too high, because if you hit it too far high, it's gonna cook too quick. Too low, it won't cook at all. So you want about a medium high. We're gonna take our first piece, separate it from the pack. Make sure we're good to go. Put my hand above it, make sure my heat's good. I'm good, I think. I'm popping a little bit. So I think we're good. Take your dough, and you're just gonna lay it in there. You're gonna let it sit. It's gonna start bubbling. You see that bubbling? You're gonna need a spoon or something that you can scoop with, and some tongs. I have a plate here so we can put the bread in. You see it starts bubbling. Once it starts rising all around, there's two methods of cooking here. Once it starts rising like that, you can scoop some oil on it and you're gonna get that elevation that's going on there. I like this if you wanna splice it open and add some meat inside. And then I just like it fluffy too. So we're gonna turn this over. Doesn't take much to cook it. So don't overcook it. You wanna make sure you get, the reason why you're putting oil on that side, because sometimes it's just fluffy like that, and it's not gonna always hit the oil like that. So we're just gonna make sure we're getting every bit in the oil as we can. And we want it brown a little bit. Get some color on it. I'm gonna turn it up just a little bit. We're getting a little color on it. I'm gonna add a little oil. Yeah, that's what I want. I'm trying to go for a golden brown all the way around. So I'm turning my oil up a little bit. Just to make sure that the dough is cooking. And typically it takes about maybe a minute on each side. The dough is a little bit, my uh, oil is a little cooler and I'm turning it up and this is the first time I'm actually frying 
uh, in this apartment. So bear with me. I'm gonna put this over here. And we are ready for the next one. We got our oil, it's a little bit hotter. This one should take a little less time. And these are actually relatively thick too. So that's, that's why it's taking a little bit longer too. Isn't it pretty though? And it's crispy. Okay. Now I mentioned two methods of cooking. Some are just let it fry like this. And then it will it'll remain relatively flat. You won't get those air bubbles like this. I'm gonna flip it. I see this is a good one because it's gonna have a little indention. You put your your toppings in there. It's gonna be great. Now you don't have to keep turning it like I am. I just like turning it. It gives me something to do. Let's get a little height with it still. While these are finishing up, we're going to, while these are finishing up, Amber, up here. Oh, sorry. While these are finishing up, we're gonna uh, come back with the finished plate and presentation. Okay, and dinner is served. We have the meat version, uh, which is rice, curry, pork, some kale, and some mushrooms. We have the vegan version, rice, kale, mushrooms, some onions as well, forget about that, and curry. And then there's the kid version, same thing. He's, he's not a meat eater today. And so, dinner is served.